these memories remind us who we are. And I want to talk a little bit about my own memories of 9-11 and three things I learned uh, from 9-11. And you may be surprised to hear that some of these are a little politically incorrect. But when 9-11 happened, uh, I had only been back in this country a year. I had left to go to England for a year and had stayed for seven years. So I was an expatriate. And I had got, had this tremendous experience living overseas for seven years, a long time, which was kind of like when the astronauts went to the moon and they took that picture of Earth and they saw it at a distance. And so for six and a half of the seven years, all I paid attention to was English politics. That's all I knew. I knew English people, read English news, was involved in English politics. The Bill Clinton scandals were going on. And of course, I, that was part of the English news, so I knew about it, but I wasn't in the country for any of that. And when I came back and I moved here to Santa Barbara, I found that my opinions had changed. And as a, a guy who had grown up in a liberal Democrat family where Republicans, there were Republicans and then there were Nazis. And the, the separation was like this, you know, that was, that was really the way for a Republican got elected president. My father was packing gold bars into a suitcase so he could bribe his way through the border to Canada. And, and so I came back and to my shock, I found that the people who were saying what I was saying in America were Rush Limbaugh, the guys at the corner in National Review, Nazis, these evil conservatives were saying what I thought had learned to be true about America from seeing it from very far away. And then I was here one year, I guess, and 9-11 happened. And I remember waking up and uh, you have to understand that my entire family lives on the island of Manhattan. Now one of them has moved uh, to the Bronx, but they all are New Yorkers and they've all lived in Manhattan all their lives. And so I wake up 3,000 miles away and I hear that a plane has gone into, a build, into the World Trade Center. And the first thing I thought of was I remembered uh, hearing, reading that in 1945, a military plane had crashed accidentally into the Empire State Building. And so I had, that was the picture in my mind when I turned on the TV and saw what, what had really happened. And of course, I started calling my family. And uh, one by one, I had three brothers and my father and mother. And I remember my, my father, uh, who's now gone, but at the time he was, he was sobbing. And I will tell you that the one thing you never want to hear in this life is your father sobbing. You do not want to hear that sound. And, and I remember, you know, he, he thought, this is war. We're now at war. And I remember saying to him, it's not going to be a big war like World War II. It's going to be a lot of little wars because there's no nation to fight. It's this, we're fighting this philosophy. We're fighting a philosophy. And that was the first lesson. That was the first lesson I remember is that we're fighting a philosophy. And so much of human life is about philosophy. So much of history is about ideas, a battle over ideas. And that was why it was my last stage in becoming an actual open conservative. I was already a conservative, but this was my last stage in acknowledging it because I saw liberals asking the question. I remember David Letterman going on TV after this happened and asking the question, why do they hate us? Now, <laughs> I, I've worked on, I've volunteered on a lot of uh, suicide hotlines, on a couple of suicide hotlines. And every now and again, you speak to a, a, a wife whose husband is violent and who hits her. And a, a lot of times the woman will say to you, what am I doing wrong? Wh why, why, what can I do to stop him from hitting me? And of course, I wasn't allowed to say it. But my answer was, shoot him, you know, <laughs> that, that'll, st that'll stop him, you know. <laughs> so, so like you, when I heard David Letterman say, why do they hate us? My, my first reaction was, well, let's kill him and see if that solves the problem. You know, that, that would be the fastest thing to do because... They're not acting because of us. That's demeaning to our enemies. It's demeaning to our enemies to think that we have some power to make them change their minds. We don't. We don't. They are grown-up adults just like us, and they are acting on their ideas as we are acting on our ideas. And that's why, that is why when I was working in the movie business at the time and selling a lot of scripts, I write, I write mysteries and ghost stories, but that's why when I saw Hollywood start to turn out these films in which our soldiers were depicted as rapists and killers and, and idiots who were being abused by evil Republicans and sent into war where they were risking their lives for nothing, that's why I became an outspoken conservative, ending, effectively ending my Hollywood career. Because I realized the, our culture is where we store these ideas that are our lived ideas, our movies, you know, not only did I think it was wrong to make anti-American films while our guys were at war, which was the real reason that, that made me so angry I started speaking out, but also this is the way th these films last forever. 
These films last forever. They're on at three o'clock in the morning. And this is the way young people will remember these things. And that's why I was so glad when American Sniper came out and told an honest version of the story. Not that we were perfect. This is not about the fact that we're better people than they are. It's the fact that bad ideas make cultures bad. Bad ideas make people do horrible things. And good ideas ennoble people and lift them up.